But, you know, John Boehner hasn't seen anything of the rebellion that will also occur from people. He's gotten a little taste of it when they go to cut Medicare and they go to cut Medicaid and other entitlement programs. The American people are absolutely uh, against this. All right, Richard, though, we got, he do, really does have a problem here, right? Because when you look at the Tea Party, now, let me show you a poll to give mm -hmm. you the depth of the problem. When asked, uh, is it time for a third party, Tea Party supporters, 60% of them said yes. 52% of Republicans said yes. So, you know, if they just keep giving into the Wall Street guys and keep, you know, the spending, whether it's through tax loopholes or whether it's through revenue or government contracts, et cetera, they're going to have a real voter problem on their hands, aren't they? Yeah, they do, and it's a problem for the whole uh, establishment of the Republican Party as they think about who is electable. Remember, the Tea Party candidates in the Senate races, those Senate-wide races, fed really badly. They lost in places they should have won because they went with unelectable people that the Tea Party wanted. That's how you end up with a third-party candidate, and I've said for many years now, this is the environment that would lead you down that track. The problem Boehner has with Wall Street isn't just about the Tea Party, though. He's making a contradictory argument. He's saying that you have have to deal with long-term debt and deficits to reassure the markets. And the way we're going to reassure the markets is to spook them by playing around with a debt limit. You cannot both spook the markets and reassure them at the same time. That New York audience surely understood there were more contradictions in there than just the Tea Party. This economic argument they're making does not make sense as it's framed right now. All right, so Representative Schakowsky, I, I yeah. know that there are other ways to balance the budget other than exactly. just simply doing it off the backs of the middle class and the poor. Uh, for example, your progressive caucus budget, in fact, your budget specifically that you proposed, has a different solution. What is that? Well, first of all, let me just say that the president, the Democratic caucus, and the progressive caucus are ready to reduce the deficit. We're just not going to do it on the backs of the uh, middle class, which is already disappearing, and certainly not on low-income people. What the progressive caucus does is 50 percent uh, in, in cuts and 50 percent in increases in revenue. And, you know, I think the American people have spoken. Eighty-one percent say that the best way to reduce the, the debt is to go is to further tax millionaires and billionaires. They know what's going on, that those people have paid the lowest tax rates in the last 50 plus years. And now the Republicans in their budget actually want to give about another two trillion dollars, one point eight trillion dollars in additional tax cuts to those people while maintaining gas and oil uh, subsidies. These are not things that are popular, I don't believe, even with the with the Tea Party. They don't want to see those kinds kinds of, uh, of t you know, cuts that are going to hurt ordinary Americans, and they don't think it's fair that the oil companies are getting these big uh, subsidies. So, Richard, explain that to me, because, look, Representative Schakowsky is right. We've shown the polls over and over again. When you ask the American people, should we raise tax on people making over a quarter of a million? Overwhelmingly, yes. Over a million? Tremendously, yes. And you, should we take away the oil subsidies? Absolutely. The numbers are overwhelming in each of those scenarios. So they have the Progressive Caucus has a balanced way of actually cutting the deficit through cutting revenue and cutting tax, I'm sorry, increasing taxes mm -hmm. that the uh, American people are in favor of. So why doesn't it even get considered? It seems like it's not even part of the conversation in Washington. Well, I think it is part of the conversation, which is exactly what's going to happen through 2012 when it comes down to the Bush tax cuts. I mean, a lot of this is going to be a really strange position for Democrats going into an election year saying that for significant numbers of people, the taxes are going to go up. Democrats are not used to finding themselves in the popular position of saying taxes are going to go up for some people. Now, when you look at the bigger the spread, if you say taxes are going up on everyone, there's no support for that. But uh, a targeted tax rise is popular in terms of what the polls have shown very consistently here. If you just put it up to millionaires and beyond, you're not really going to deal with the deficit. And by the way, when Boehner says uh, oh, we're going to deal with trillions and not billions, well, I don't hear anything from anyone, White House, Democrats, Republicans. Everyone's talking about trillions. If you spread this out over enough years, you end up with trillions. That's what they're all talking about. It's not a trillion this year. It's a trillions over 10 years. So there's funny money going on here as well. 
Hey, look, I'm more of a conservative uh, on fiscal discipline than maybe anybody in the country. But there, I, Representative Schakowsky, I think there's an easy way to do this. You know, Richard's right. You're talking about trillions. But, you know, Boehner always says, well, inaction would be the most terrible thing and it would be unacceptable. Actually, that's not true. If we don't take any action, we go back to the Clinton tax rates. And you know how much that would raise in the next 10 years alone? Four trillion dollars. Exactly. So why don't we just do that? Exactly. Well, the president has uh, has talked about it, certainly for those who make $250,000 and over. I introduced uh, legislation that would create new tax brackets, starting at a million dollars and ratcheting up to a billion dollars. And actually, there's a lot of money, um, about over 800 billion dollars over 10 years if we just taxed uh, at, at a fair rate, a tax lower than during the Reagan administration, a, 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 a million up to a billion dollars. That's where the money is. That's what Willie Sutton said when asked why does he rob banks, because that's where the money is. And John Boehner doesn't want to go there. He wants to further burden old people and frail people and middle class people by uh, getting rid of Medicare and, and Medicaid and even going after Social Security. No, that is not where the American people want to go. Well, you know, Representative Schakowsky, they know exactly where the money is. That's the money they're trying to protect. They want to hold on to it for their donors. Richard, last thing for you, because, look, I want to play this video because it gives you a great sense of the problem that John Boehner has. This is a Tea Party supporter talking about going after Boehner. Let's watch that. Instead of a fighter for U.S. taxpayers, Mr. Boehner has been a surrenderist. It's a cowardly act of treason against coming generations, and we may be able to give Boehner something really to cry about. So, I, look, I love the goofy outfit, but, but Richard, <laughs> I, tell me here, what, you know, to the point of this whole discussion, what is Boehner going to do at the end? Is he going to go with the guys in the funny outfits, or is he going to go with the guys with all the money at Wall Street? Is he going to blink here? Is he bluffing? What's the final result of this? Well, he's going to try for as long as he can to do both, at least through the primaries. Remember, the challenge here is that those Tea Party folks take on his base, his members, uh, at the primary stage. And that's where the challenge is. Third party candidates aren't really going to challenge all these House members. There may be some impact they can have on the presidential race. But there is a strong anti-corporate feeling from those Tea Party folks. Remember those signs they held up? They were against the bank bailouts. The oil bailouts don't make any sense to those folks either. So they can move this to a philosophical edge of how big should government be. But in the end, at this point, for the next year or so, he's really got to pander to the Tea Party folks first and say privately to the Wall Street guys, don't worry, we'll look after you. Right. But when it comes to the debt ceiling, they're not going to touch that. They're gonna the blink. money always speaks in the Republican Party. That's my opinion. Representative Jan Schakowsky, Richard Wolf, you. you guys have been great. Thank you so much for joining us. You bet. Thanks.